Amity commuter rail serves as an important transportation network for people commuting around the suburbs of Boston. However, the Amity has faced challenges throughout the years on frequent delays and their lack of funding, and now they have the chance to do that. In today's video, I'll be focusing on how they can improve their electrification and what they can do to acquire new locomotives. Chapter 1. Electrification Most of MBTA's commuter lines are not electrified, meaning that there are no overhead wires. To do this, they would have to put wires on most of the lines. However, there is one existing line that they could benefit from and might be the best choice for them to start off with. The Providence Stoughton Line, also known as the Boston to Wickford Junction section, operates entirely over the Amtrak Northeast Corridor, which is already electrified. The MBTA has been operating diesel trains on an electrified line for more than 20 years, which is a problem. All they would have to do is operate electric trains. However, the MBTA proposed a project in July of 2022. The proposed project is focused on four different lines on electrifying them. Let's break it down. For phase one, the MBTA would begin with electrifying the Providence Stoughton line. The service goal for this line is to offer trains every 30 minutes from South Station to Stoughton in Providence, and every 60 minutes to Wickford Junction. During off-peak hours, service on the Stoughton branch would run every 60 minutes. An advantage of this line is that it is already fully wired with overhead catenary service for Amtrak's Northeast Corridor trains, which means that there are already relatively few infrastructure upgrades needed to run additional electric trains for the T. Changes to this line would include a new potential substation at Roxbury to support the additional trains, as well as a new electrical maintenance facility at the Reville Yard built on existing MBTA property in the Hyde Park neighborhood. Next up would be the Stoughton section. The MBTA plans that they could run electric trains on this branch without building any new overhead wires, with the stretch from South Station to Canton Junction running on the Providence lines existing overhead catenary wires, and the branch from Canton Junction to Stoughton running on batteries. Next up would be the Fairmont line. The MBTA is considering a proposal to increase service on the Fairmont line with a new fleet of electric battery powered trains before the end of 2027. The Fairmont line would move closer to a rapid transit style of service with trains that would arrive every 20 minutes on weekdays and every 30 minutes on weekends. Currently, diesel powered trains arrive every 45 minutes on weekdays and every 90 minutes on weekends. So these battery electric trains could drastically change the time on arrival. Keyless, the company that operates the MBTA commuter rail system, has submitted a proposal to deliver 20-minute frequency decarbonized service on the Fairmont line. The proposal is to acquire and operate a fleet of battery electric multiple units and supporting infrastructure and facilities which will be sufficient to operate 20-minute progress on weekdays and 30-minute headways on weekends, according to documents on the proposed project. The documents also suggest that implementation could be well underway before June 2026, when the current operations contract with Keyless will be up for renewal. The term of the contract is from contract effecting until June 30th, 2026. Another section of Keyless's proposal specifies that the new electric trains would replace older diesel-powered commuter rail trains that are nearing the end of their useful service life. The new trains would be in service by the end of 2027. Next would be the new Bayport Rockport lines. It is possible to electrify some of the line, but the electrification analysis found numerous clearance issues ranging from low to high complexity along the line, including the Salem Tunnel. It is possible to add wires in the tunnel, but it would be costly. Also, five drawbridges along these lines would be a challenge for overhead wire due to how difficult and expensive they are to retrofit and maintain with OCS. Another infrastructure obstacle is the limited capacity of the electrical grid in more rural parts of the state, such as Rockport, and the accommodations the T already has to make. The MBTA would have to use diesel generators during the summer to supply backup power since the grid is overloaded with consumer demand and the real main power grid feed out there is not enough. Instead of building new overhead wires along the entire route, wires would be installed from Chelsea to just north of Beverly. Those wires would charge onboard batteries, which would then power trains for the rest of the route. 
batteries could also be charged at North Station and at a new electrified light maintenance facility, possibly in South Salem, where there is already a historic yard. For Phase 1A of the project is the Worcester Line. The proposal for this line includes battery-powered service on either end of the line, with overhead wires powering the middle portion. So there will be battery trains operated between Boston and Newton, the proposed overhead catenary service will be between Newton and Westboro, and then more battery trains operated between Westboro and Worcester. Chapter 2. New Locomotives It has been about a decade since the MBTA has had a single new locomotive. The MBTA has a fleet of around 100 locomotives, with their newest engines being the HSP-46s, which were built between 2013 and 2014. These locomotives are a reliable backbone of the fleet and are also its cleanest engines, being compliant with the EPA's Tier 3 diesel emission standards. The MBTA owns only two other modern locomotives, a pair of Motive Power MP36 PH-3Cs purchased as extra from Utah's Frontrunner in 2009. These two are currently receiving overhauls by Waptec and will most likely return late this year. The remaining 62 locomotives on the MBTA's fleet are between 30 and 50 years old, and passenger locomotives usually have a life of about 25 to 30 years. 37 of the MBTA's oldest engines are F40 locomotives, built between 1987 and 1991. The MBTA's F40s are so old that they've been rebuilt multiple times, once in the early 2000s and once again in the 2020s. These F40s are classified as F40 PH-3Cs and are a backbone of the fleet. These locomotives aren't very reliable since although they just underwent an overhaul, their engines are getting close to the end of their useful service life and are far less environmentally friendly than modern diesels. The MT has one more locomotive that has been around for 50 years. They operate 25 GP40MC locomotives. Originally built as GP40-2LW freight locomotives between 1973 and 1975, the Jeeps are by far the oldest engines on the MBTA, and are still in regular service on the north side. The remaining engines and passenger service are literally falling apart, and as there are no replacement engines on order, they will keep falling apart for the foreseeable future, even though some of these engines are being refurbished and put into non-revenue service. As I mentioned earlier, the MBTA does have a, a proposal to order battery electric trains on the Fairmount line. These would be called Battery electric multiple units and were issued in December of 2021. Five manufacturers responded, but we don't know who yet. The typical procurement for these trains would be between five to six years. The process would be consultant onboarding for six to nine months, develop requests for proposals and performance requirements for six to nine months, issue requests for information to notice to proceed 10 to 12 months, NTP to first transit delivery is 36 to 42 months, Production of transets would be one transit per month and then one year of testing first transit before revenue service. Also, new heavy maintenance facilities are expected as well, but BEMUs require different maintenance facilities and they cannot be combined with diesel locos. These locomotives are expected to enter service before the end of 2027. Once these enter service, they might become one of MBTA's environmentally friendly locomotives. Chapter 3. Conclusion The MBTA has a lot of things that makes its system good, and a lot of exciting things that they look forward to, such as improving their electrification and other big rail projects, such as South Coast Rail to expand their commuter rail system down to New Bedford and Fall River, as well as East-West Rail Project, expanding service west into Western Mass. If the MBTA were to receive the funding that they really need, it could possibly be one of the best commuter rails in the country, serving the suburbs in the greater Boston area.